8 a.m. in the morning. So we are going to be going up to 8.40 until we head into BBC Money Daily. But right about now, our next segment, we are going to be talking about the minimum wage that an employer is required to pay wage uh, earners for. Uh, wage honors for the work performed during a given period. This wage cannot be reduced by a collective agreement or an individual contract. If it is set by the government, no one, an employee cannot reduce it and an employer can ought, uh, alter that agreement. So the purpose of minimum wages is to protect vulnerable workers against unduly low pay, address poverty by redistributing income from employers to low wage employees and encourage labor productivity among other among other things. According to the World Bank, Uganda's poverty has increased from 19.7% to 21.4%. That is really, really mind-boggling. Remember, around 2015, 2016, when we launched this National Development Plan 2, our poverty rate was at around 19.7%. And officials were trying to find a way to reduce that from 19.7 to at least 14.2%. But imagine, after five years, as we head into 2020, and as the, uh, the National Development Plan Plan 2 is elapsing, coming to an, to, us, to an end as a transition to NDP 3, it has increased from 19.7 from 19.7 to 21.4. So the opposite has happened. But then I have some few, uh, some very, very good prolific people right here from Siatini and an NGO in Kalangala who are, who are going to be helping me dissect this issue. I have uh, Faith Lumonia, she's a program officer at I also have Rosemary Tucker. She's the executive director, NGO for Kalangala. They both join me right now in studio. Very good morning, Faith Thank and Miss Tucker. Morning. Thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. Let good me start morning. with you, Miss Tucker. Help us understand what is the NGO Forum Kalangala and what does it do? Kalangala District NGO Forum is a, a non government organization, an umbrella organization for all civil society organizations working in Kalangala to uplift community livelihood livelihoods how are you uplifting community livelihoods we do it through advocacy and lobbying mm. for different projects to do to do certain work in kalangala we do it from networking and information sharing we get a, we get information from different areas on different aspects of our things and then we net we, we, we share information through through our member organizations we do capacity building for different NGOs so through proposal writing resource mobilization community development work so that they can be able to demand for their rights mm -hmm. and they are to demand for their rights and to demand for service delivery in Kalangala. Let me get this straight and mm. I hope the viewer does get this straight. Um, yes. If I'm working for company A and mm. then the NGO uh, forum that you're working for shows yes. up and then it interrogates me about my remuneration. Mm. So if you find out that the money I'm being paid is low, mm. what happens next? Do you... Uh, what happens next? We, we, we advocate for, for, for wages to be increased through uh, approaching your employers mm -hmm. So that we talk about it and see the those areas or issues that affect the the, the people that you, you work for you, so that we can put the things right and then see how you can increase on their wages mm -hmm. or their their pay. Mm -hmm. Because we know in, in 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 Uganda here we have a lot of issues that are, are attached to our pay that we get, like paying a pay paying any. SSF, then re 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 remaining with a little that can do your household uh, uh, income, if things. Eh? So that uh, when you see the trend in Uganda, where it's going, eh, the money we get, especially women who have been left with a lot of responsibility of looking for children, mm -hmm. orphans, uh, men have neglected their work, mm -hmm. you find that the money they get is too little. They work hard. Mm -hmm. Uh, despite all the other factors affecting their health, eh, to get that money, and at the end of the day, the money is not enough for their work. So mostly, you are talking about casual laborers. Yeah, we are talking of casual laborers who work uh, in uh, factories, who work in uh, uh, areas like, uh, for us in Kalangala, like palm oil growers. They are they, they are those casual laborers. Mm -hmm. We have we have these ladies who work uh, in saloons. Those ladies who use to be 
in fishing and when illegal fishing came up they they were they dropped the uh, then mm. they came to to little stores to sell off their tomatoes what what those 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 ladies mm -hmm. the the money they they earn is too little even if they have their private businesses the money they earn is too little that it can't uh, compensate for whatever they do to 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 make their household mm. uh, have a, a have a, a good living mm. yes that is a very very good initiative uh, mm. Ms. Taka. let me now engage the program officer at siatini faith mm. faith uh, the, the kampala capital city authority um, big boss right there who's also the lord mayor of kampala mm. that is lord mayor areas Lukwago, did mention that he's going to increase the stipends or wages of all casual laborers at kcca mm. do you think a minimum wage for casual laborers is viable um a minimum wage is very important, just like you put it mm -hmm. in your initial uh, statements. Mm -hmm. And uh, because it gives power to a casual labor. And when we talk about, because a lot of times there are people who are afraid about the idea of a minimum wage. For example, if I am, like say myself, I am earning a certain amount of money. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the, the fear is that if the minimum wage is put at 200,000, my boss may want to actually give me 200,000. But the, 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 the thing about the minimum wage is that it is set to support individuals that can't negotiate for a fair wage. So at the moment, um, it's at 6,000 shillings according to the 1986 Act. Mm -hmm, yeah. 1986 Act, and there are people, despite the fact that it's at that rate, 6,000, they are poor are getting 2,000 shillings mm -hmm. a day. And so uh, the idea of a minimum wage is, is very important, but the president has indicated that um, it will discourage investors. Mm -hmm. And for us, the question that we are raising is that who is he ultimately responsible for because the state has the duty to protect mm -hmm. and when we talk about protecting it's about its citizens first mm -hmm. because we 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 there there are a number of obligations that have been set out for us that we have lived up to say for example paying our fair share of tax mm -hmm. but there are um, Say and and I, I'm not going to say this because um, that I do not want for any investors mm -hmm. because that is the challenge we have always been deemed not to want for any investors. But what we want is that these for investors need to be regulated, mm -hmm. and um, it's not just for any investors but investors in general. And the feeling that we get is perhaps because Uganda is leaning more towards the capitalistic. Um, structure mm -hmm. we our, our leadership seems to be more in support and more bent towards protecting the rights of investors as opposed to protecting the rights of communities mm -hmm. the rights of citizens mm -hmm. and so for us um, that is why we are insisting that there is need for a minimum wage because there are so many uh, workers in these factories in these flower farms that have failed to influence to negotiate with their employers mm -hmm. to give them a, a better wage. So is the problem on the president because the parliamentarians did their part when yes. they passed the minimum wage 2015 in mm -hmm. February of this year. Mm -hmm. The president just refused to assent to it, giving exactly. the reasons that she just gave us. Yes. So is it the problem on the president right now? Yeah, the problem is on the president because um, if the president does not assent to a legal framework, mm -hmm. then um, it, it, it cannot come into force. Mm -hmm. Okay, our constitution provides for a number of modalities it is that for example if he rejects it two times mm. then the third time when the members of parliament pass it it can then come into force mm. so at the moment that that is what we are hoping for mm -hmm. that the members of parliament will sit once again and pass it mm. but um, like they say when a fish is rotting it starts in the head mm -hmm. so if the head is not in support of a particular legal framework like this then it creates a problem mm. because then it will also create um, limitations in terms of uh, funding for this act, uh, for this act to actually be implemented because mm -hmm. we know within um, within our country today a lot of the decisions are ultimately taken mm. by um, the executive so 
we despite the fact that we have the alternative of the members of parliament once again sitting and passing it for us our prayer is that the president will look once again into it and consider the importance of having such a legal framework in place because it will not only enhance um, the livelihoods of, of people but it will also enhance the interest of these workers to to to, to contribute towards the towards the the the, the investment the growth mm -hmm. of the investments and like you mentioned um, the uh, poverty has increased and I was in a meeting recently which was organized by the Ministry of Finance and um, one of the things wa that was noted was that Ugandans are very highly vulnerable mm -hmm. that within the um, within the, 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 the past few years the vulnerability to poverty has mm -hmm. increased and one of the indicate uh, one of the causes of this is because people are earning very low wages mm -hmm. so the only way government can intervene is by setting a minimum wage and a substantial minimum wage 6000 mm -hmm. shillings is low it's, it's really so low. we need to consider increasing mm. and fact, do you think the absence of a minimum wage law mm -hmm. has exacerbated the brain drain that we are grappling with in Uganda right now exactly how um, well so we we invest a lot of money in education mm. and you know today that um, the amount of government support when it comes to for example university education mm. has um, reduced tremendously so there are a lot of individuals that are privately financing their education but also even when you get to these institutions the materials that are available are very few so you also have to invest in availing yourself with material so when you think about how much money you're investing and then you get to this job mm. and the offer that you're being made is much lower than what you think your value is mm. The option is that I will take what has been offered outside mm. there. And um, today, uh, the, 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 there is a lot of opportunities for, I mean, within the East African community, we have free movement of, um, of workers, or, and, and, and so there are opportunities for people to go, mm. to go around, mm. around the world and mm. get jobs. So I, 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 I personally do not see a reason why someone should give up on a job out there if it's paying much more. Mm. Um, for a job that is that is that is in Uganda, it's really scary, Faith. What I mean, is, that, what that, that, saying, those are my own, those yeah, are my own personal. Yeah, then it's really, really scary the fact that we are losing so many skilled mm. people just because we have low wages in our country, yet we can retain them. Exactly. And the president is still being stubborn in that regard. Mm. I, I really mm. hope he does see the light in that regard, and then we do pass the minimum minimum wage 2015, mm. so that we do retain those good people. Many yeah. people are living mm. in droves, I'm telling you, and mm. young people who are energetic mm. to take on this economy me but, to that um, uh, middle income status yeah but again again like I said when we are talking about the minimum wage it's mm. really for the casual workers okay. I know that there are a number of and, and when I talk about casual workers it's those that have uh, whose skills are not as developed so for mm. example a primary lever um, like some of the people lever. in uh, Ms. Like, Taka's neighborhood exactly, in Kalangala yes. Ms. Taka in the people of Kalangala how has the absence of a minimum wage bill affected mm. them especially those people working in the prime palm oil fields. I've been hearing stories since 2015 mm. about some of those people working in the really amazing. Let's now continue with our conversation which is the minimum wage bill. I have Miss Kaya and Miss Faith. Miss Kaya, let's talk about um, your people in Kalangala who are grappling when it comes to the absence of the minimum wage bill. Help us understand how they've been affected. These people are affected, eh? Like those people who are working in uh in palm oil gardens, eh? they do a lot of work, especially women. Eh? Mm. When you look at women, eh? they do a lot of work. They wake up at 7, go to the gardens, come back at 4 in the evening, and they work, they, no lunch, no, they, they carry fertilizers, 50, 50 kilograms per day, and you, 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 you use like uh, 15 or 14 bags a day. Mm. These ladies, they, they, they feel they, they, their health is being uh, 
is being done, what their health is being affected mm. because they feel uh, pain in their chest and they feel pain in these abdo lower abdomens, eh, mm. which affects even their, their, uh, what, their health as women. Eh? Uh, what I what I can say, it the, the ladies need have have been uh, have been given a lot of responsibilities by their husband. Their husband spend a lot of time mm. drinking, doing other things, so they compensate for the household uh, expenses. Mm -hmm. So they need to be given uh, something higher than what they get today, mm -hmm. because gi being given a net pay of uh, like two hundred and six a month mm -hmm. is too little. That even if you 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 distribute that in the thirty days of a mm -hmm. month, you might not be able to achieve what you want. People go 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 with the porridge. Mm. during uh, lunch time and then they eat uh, supper because of the little pay they need these jobs they, when 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 uh, we, we we had start, when this project had started in Kalangala they were given incentives mm. the incentives they are given for 25 years they were they promise to employ like locals in Kalangala but because of the minimum way that that wage being too little mm. the locals abandoned it to be to be to start to work in Kalangala so they had it they had to source people from outside so when they bring those people from their families and they bring them to work in Kalangala they end up being there for all their life mm -hmm. they can't go back to their areas because what they get is just little for what they mm -hmm. they they have then uh, at the end of the day when they get misunderstandings they get crashes at work they are sent away they stay in kalangala mm -hmm. doing other other local local jobs and then what has happened we have experienced uh, theft eh? Mm -hmm. Fives, eh? a lot of fives. The 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 population of uh, bidiko workers uh, that uh, that have left their work have increased in Kalangala. So it has increased on the on uh, our service delivery, mm -hmm. like Kerefe, that when they 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 took they count us population census, they count when people. Uh, uh, they, they, they've they gone to their areas, mm -hmm. eh? to their homes, mm -hmm. the homes. So when they give us medicine, when they give us uh, other other things in the hospital, it's just for the population of Kalangala. Mm -hmm. But when they see influx of medical workers come in, eh? then the medicine they give us is low. Mm -hmm. So it has also affected the, 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 the health sector. So let's mm -hmm. say you talk to the employers to increase the minimum mm -hmm. wages of their subordinates and they refuse to do so. So, mm. because they, the president also refused to assent to the law that was passed in February. Mm. So, what would be your next course of action as next NGO Forum Kalangala? As an as NGO Forum, we are trying to negotiate because we are not there to uh, to to fight with government, but just to negotiate eh, mm -hmm. for a fair pay for those women who work in Kalangala. Mm -hmm. So, we, 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 our our issue is to go beyond and talk to the, our members of parliament. We talk to to the concerned people mm. who can influence change at uh, at the uh, project level mm. because for us we can we can approach the the project level then when they when it doesn't work out mm. we just go to influence our member of parliament mm. who can also influence the president mm. like the trend goes like that until we reach what so we the want. ngo forum kalangala is representing the voiceless in that regard yes the you're voice just trying to represent the views of those people yes, in kalangala yes thank you very much for the good work you're doing miss mm. tucker miss faith we are talking about the minimum wage bill analysts some analysts do believe that the minimum wage bill kills jobs you have the president saying that he doesn't want to institute a minimum wage bill because it will chase away our investors is this true well in uh, like because I they said, believe minimum wage kills jobs because it chases away investors mm -hmm. who feel like the cost of doing business has now risen so is it true does the minimum wage uh, kill jobs well in my opinion it doesn't mm. Because um, the, 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 the kind of people we are talking about that need a minimum wage are people who are not um, as skilled. Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, if it's someone who is weeding mm -hmm. or pruning mm -hmm. or um, pouring fertilizers, 
that particular job will not easily be replaced with um with capital or a machine mm. so it would if, if if we are talking about increasing um someone's wage from 2000 shillings and mm. saying that they should be given at least 8000 mm. shillings when you look at that difference if um if, if 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 an investor decided to replace such a laborer they would have to invest much more in mm -hmm. terms of capital so that's why in my opinion i think the minimum wage uh, wouldn't mm -hmm. uh, result in too increased unemployment like the president has argued mm -hmm. but also like i said ultimately the discussion about whether or not we should have a minimum wage is really around uh should 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 be focused on people's rights on the right of people to development on the right of people to um, an improved livelihood and not necessarily about um uh, uh, about how much how, how many investors we retain mm -hmm. or not i know we need investors mm -hmm. but i think it's important for us to pick up um, the 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 um, pick up on some of the things that other countries have mm. taken on, mm -hmm. and be able to put in place legal frameworks that actually protect mm -hmm. the rights of individuals. So, so mm. to f for me to give you my answer. Mm. My answer is no. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't enough. It mm -hmm. wouldn't result in two increased damage. Okay, let's say the minimum wage doesn't kill jobs. So who benefits the most? Is it the poor or the middle class? Um, largely the poor, because it's it's the poor who are because when we talk about poverty, poverty is multifaceted. It could be about skills. It could be um, about your level of education in terms of your papers. So it's about that person who can't be able to negotiate for a better wage using certain certain things that they have. Mm -hmm. And uh, because when you talk about the middle class, the, the, the middle class like myself, mm -hmm. <laughs> I hope mm -hmm. I'm among the middle class. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when you talk about the middle class, I, I, have, I have my papers. Mm -hmm. But also I... Mm, I, 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 so, so because, because I have my papers and I have certain skills, mm -hmm. I, but also I have connections mm -hmm. because I have a network of certain people who I can speak to and, and, and those people can be able to negotiate on my behalf or I can be able to negotiate uh, on my own behalf using what I have. But now when you look at a person who hasn't really gone to school, they're either primary dropout or they um, haven't gone to school at all and they can't write in some of the women that um, Ms. Taka is talking about are women who cannot even write. Right. But they have a certain ability to be able to do certain work mm -hmm. or to pick on a certain skill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So those, those are the people who we are talking about. That government needs to come in because government is has been put there to be able to, um, to, to defend mm -hmm. and protect the rights mm -hmm. of of people and especially of the most vulnerable. Mm -hmm. As we speak, there is mm -hmm. no minimum wage law. Mm -hmm. So if the president wants to help the poor, I believe he wants to help the poor. Mm -hmm. and I believe, I believe. I believe so. I believe. In all this entirety, because he's, he's I expedited this uh, mm -hmm. process to go back to the ghetto, you know, mm -hmm. and start trying to look at the people in those areas. Mm -hmm. I believe ghettos are not only in Kampala, mm -hmm. but most of the areas across, in, in, across Uganda. Mm -hmm. So what can he do? To, what can he do to help the workers in this country minus the minimum wage law to help the poor? No, oh, wow. <laughs> it's not there. So what can he do now uh, well, in the absence I, of the minimum wage law to help those poor casual workers? I mean, what, because you're, you're either employed or you ha you're running a business. Mm -hmm. And efforts have been made mm. uh, by the, um, like for example, for women economic empowerment within the Ministry of mm. Gender, they put they put this this fund uh, for for women oh, women, women entrepreneurs women. Uh, entrepreneurs, but also even for the youth, efforts have been made. But um, the management is too poor. The management, but also the business environment mm. is not as supportive. So, for example, you will find a small and medium enterprise who is is um is struggling 
because because um, the, the 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 requirements, for example, in terms of taxation, are very high on them. So you find a company like Bidco, which has the the the, the capacity to pay their uh, to pay the uh, their fair share of tax, mm. have been given um uh, incentive. an incentive for up to 25 years but the mm. same the same company is paying low wages mm -hmm. and then you find an entrepreneur faith i have set out to establish my company but the amount of taxes mm. that i'm supposed to pay mm. whether um, in may uh, tax but also non-tax revenues they are very high and they 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 affect the cash flow within my business so I think, uh, to answer your question, mm. the, 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 the government, but also the president at the moment, has a lot to do in terms of, um, in terms of economic empowerment, mm -hmm. of whether it's men or women. But uh, for us, we are more interested in the women because at the moment, mm. there are so many things that have changed at household level. Mm. Women are taking on a lot of responsibilities mm. and men are not doing anything to support. So that is why we are talking about the women. But the government has a lot to do in terms of being able to design policy frameworks that can actually support entrepreneurship growth but also people in the labor market mm. and 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 to support people in the labor market it's really about because when we're talking about how much if we're talking about economic empowerment it's about how much i'm going to earn mm. so ultimately there is need for a minimum wage for people who derive their livelihoods from employment mm -hmm. then for people who derive their livelihood from a business we can talk about the issue of being able to access a cheap loan mm -hmm. being able to, to to not be choked by taxes yeah. so there is no other way the president can circumvent this with, without assenting to the <laughs> minimum wage no. bill of 2015 no, is that no. is the only only no, solution assent to the assent to the bill make it law it's, protect it's, the workers and also because um, the the you know when you when i, I don't know what happens but mm. when people people uh, when people come to uganda they they are they they, they their morals sort of drop perhaps mm. because of the legal frameworks either that are in place that are not mm. being implemented or that are not in place so mm. for example um i'll give an example of uh, a, com a dutch owned company royal van zantin hmm? mm. that um in 2000 2008 about 80 women were exposed to poisonous chemicals mm. and when they were confronted they said that the bilateral investment treaty under which they were operating does not put them under any obligation to provide say protective gears or to protect mm. the health of these individuals so for them they they didn't see why we were confronting them with all these concerns mm -hmm. and you so so it shows you that if there is no legal framework in place people will behave the way they want mm -hmm. if the legal framework is in place and it's not being implemented they'll behave the they'll way they want compelled. but the positive mm -hmm. aspect to a legal framework being in place is that they are human rights defenders they are um, they, they are they are civil society organizations that have taken on litigation so they can be able to go to court and say you know court the law has been put in place these people are supposed to do this but they are not doing this so ultimately it's more beneficial to have a legal framework in place miss miss faith and miss tucker mm. I've, I've gotten something really pertinent from this conversation mm. that yes. uh, these com multinational companies are not paying our casual workers low mm -hmm. wages because of a uh, lack of a minimum wage law mm -mm. Mm. they are not paying them well enough mm -hmm. because they have they don't have the requisite papers mm. do you agree miss tucker do you agree that these companies are paying our people low wages because they have they don't have the requisite papers that they need or they have low papers? What, so what they are, are trying to are capitalize what, on mm. that that since you don't have this, we are going to be paying you this. No, I don't think it is so right. Is the, okay, because the question, the, uh, let me rephrase the question. Mm. Is the path to better wages a skill or a degree? A path to better wages? Yes, is it is a it? skill or the degree? Me, uh, personally, mm. I think they are both. There is a skill and there is a degree. Yes. Those are their papers. Mm. But now when you look at these, these la younger ladies, eh, 
some of them they are they are supervisors the at least they have some mm. some skill mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then there are some that are uh, just casual laborers mm. eh, that uh, don't have that that, that skill. And but they with, don't have the papers, but they have a skill. Uh, they have a skill, mm. but with experience, mm. they've gained whatever the the the, the, the factory want. Mm. But uh, when you look at the money they are paid, they they, they, they it's the the policy that they they the 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 the, 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 fact, the the, the project uses or the factory uses that our uh, beyond two 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 mm. two hundred and and thirty mm -hmm. two hundred and thirty thousand eh? mm. they go beyond that mm. why then they pay them a hundred thousand mm. because they know that Ugandan law a person to be earning has to be uh, beyond eh? two hundred and thirty five thousand thank you so they go thank you very that. much Miss Taka mm. and Faith mm. ten seconds. What do you think? A degree or a skill? For me, I think it's both. Mm. Because, um, uh, uh, but also, uh, because from the question that you have asked, mm. these, these, these employers are only taking advantage of these women. Because not they don't because, have the papers. Not because mm. they don't have the papers, but because they are desperate. Mm. Because at, at, at the beginning, we talked about the poverty level. Lack of papers causes Uganda. desperation. So it's, it's not about lack of papers. Thank it's you about very much, Faith. The Let's need for that. money. Yeah. The yeah. need for the money. Need for money. Yes. Mm. Faith right there. She's the program officer at CRT and Ms. Taka right there. She's the executive director at the NGO Forum in Kalangala. Both of them are champions trying to make sure that we have a minimum wage law in Uganda. The minimum wage bill was passed in February by Parliament. The president refused to assent to it, saying it might chase away investors. My name is Romy Busiko. Let's take a quick break. I'll be right back with your birthdays.